you got going on hey 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 it's miss b positively miss b your spiritual realist coming to you again on the peace of word network and as always i'm excited thank you so much for joining me i pray everything is going well with you you know we have to take everything and look at it through the eyes of the lord there's a blessing and a lesson in everything even though you may consider it to be stressing so this is Miss B, positive and Miss B. And yet again, you don't see my face, but I'm coming back soon. Uh, I'm here every Friday at 9 a.m. East Coast time. You can also find me on my Facebook or all social media, as well as my YouTube channel, Positively Miss B, for any episodes that you may have missed. I continue to thank the founders of the network and all those who are participating and making sure that we have this global broadcast ministry to share the words that are coming for you. That's right. They're coming for you to encourage you, uplift you, inspire you. Uh, as for me, I want to help you grow spiritually. I simply use scripture to say, if it's true, how's it working for you? That's right. I use scripture. And most of the time I am the, I guess you say example, but I just use scripture to say, if it's true, how's it working for you? If you saw the last episode or heard the last episode, I'm talking about character for the next upcoming weeks. I used um, Titus last week, but this week we're going to talk about character again. And that's very important to me. Um, putting on a Christ-like personality is something that we all should work for. So Father, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I thank you for this opportunity again to be before the listeners and the viewers with a message that you have downloaded in my spirit to encourage them, uplift them, support them in their spiritual growth. Father, I thank you for the words that are coming out of my mouth. I pray that whatever I do is always acceptable in your sight, but I also want it to be received in a manner that is meant with each episode, and that is to be a blessing to them, to share the word that you have downloaded in my spirit. So, Father, in the name of Yeshua, again, I thank you for this platform. I thank you for the voice. I want you to continue to uh, bless abundantly this network. And may all that they see that they sow be returned to them a uh, hundred thousand infinitely unfolded. That being said, everybody, it is done. It is so. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to talk about character for the next upcoming uh, broadcast, and that's because the Lord has shown me that a lot of people are um, struggling with who they think they should be, who they are, what's expected of them as a follow of Yeshua, the demands coming from religion and denominations, and it's just a lot going on. Um, and a lot of people want to identify as a believer, as a follower of what they believe in, and I want to talk about the character of a follower of Yeshua. Galatians 5, 22, 23. A lot of you know about the fruits of the spirit. You know, they want to always talk about that, especially when it comes to certain times of the year. But Galatians 5, 22, 23. I use the uh, ESV version because I use an application uh, openbible.info, it's a topical Bible, and it's easy for me to reference when I'm doing things online as opposed to flipping through pages. So Galatians 5.22, the ESV version says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and then it says, against such things, there is no law. I've done several videos uh, on love. This is not my only um, interest on Preacher Word Network. I have my own network. I have two internet networks. And for years, I've been doing podcasts and interviews and 
Um, so this is not my first experience coming before you. And some of my videos are um, on love. If you wanna look those up, you can go to Benita Claiborne. And then one of my pages is the Storm Talk 365 page. And I have extensive videos there. But let's move forward. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Um, but let's talk about character. I talked about character last week. And again, we're going to be moving forward with character for a while. But the combination of traits and qualities. Traits and qualities. Did you know character is a choice, regardless of the spiritual references or the social, economic, familial impact, who we are for the most part is a choice. You choose the type of character you want to, the character traits you want to portray. I've done a series on character traits on the morning show with Miss B. Again, those videos are available as well. But for this purpose, we're going to talk about the combination of traits and qualities that distinguish us as followers of Yeshua, as the creations of Yahweh. Our nature. What is our nature? It is said that we should be distinguished not by what we say, but just how we live. Our distinguishing quality is our spiritual traits, our character trait, our choice for our behavior, our personalities. What is our moral force? How do we carry ourselves as far as integrity is concerned? What's the definition of character as far as man is concerned? It says the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. It says the mental your thoughts and moral, your beliefs, the qualities that make you distinct as an individual, but not just as an, an individual, but as a follower of Yeshua. What are your character traits? You know, they talk about the fruit of the spirit. In other words, what does the spirit in you, which should be, recognize as Yeshua, the righteousness of Christ that dwells within you. What is the righteousness of Christ that dwells within you yielding? It says the fruit of the spirit. The spirit that you allow to control you will yield fruit. In this case, we're talking about Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Savior, the righteousness of Christ that dwells within you. But what does it mean when it says it's bearing fruit? Uh, what are you saying when you bear fruit? What are you showing other people as far as what you believe in? What are you producing? Are you showing other people the righteousness of Christ, the spirit man that dwells within you, is he producing fruit? Are you confident in who Jehovah God our Father says you are? Are you confident in the righteousness of Christ that dwells within you enough to let the personality of the flesh to be subdued and the spirit man rise up? So many people say, and I, I, I really, I used to, it's a popular song in, in certain um, ethnic groups. Uh, it's a pro popular song saying in certain ethnic groups. And it would say, Lord, I want more of you and less of me. Well, I don't say that. I say, I want all of the righteousness of Christ and none of me. I want the righteousness of Christ to take full control of my personality. I am the temple of the Lord. I'm housing the righteousness of Christ. And I want him to take full control of my personality, my behavior, my thoughts. I want 
all of him because anything that has to do with me is subject to emotions and intellectual influence. And I also am prone to sin. So the fruit of the spirit that we should be wanting to bear should be the righteousness of Christ allowing our personality to be representative of him. That is the fruit. And listed scripturally, it says love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And then it says there's no law against it. In other words, there's nothing stopping you from doing any of these. There's nothing stopping you except you. So what type of character traits are you choosing to portray as the fruit of the spirit of the righteousness of Christ that dwells within you? I'm going to skip love because that has been discussed not only on the Preacher Word Network, but um, on some of my other videos. And I'm coming back to that uh, with a different view on love as previously discussed in some of my other videos. So we're going to skip over to joy. You know, a lot of people, I'm not going to let anybody steal my joy. Um, well, actually, the joy of the Lord is permanent. Whether you activate it or acknowledge it, it's up to you. But the joy of the Lord is a part of our birthright. But we tend to confuse joy and happiness. And joy is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness that Jehovah God our Father has given us through the righteousness of Christ because he dwells within us. Um, joy is ongoing, but happiness is momentary because it's based on a certain event feeling. Um, it's just something that can be temporary because it's just a state of being. That state of being could shift at any time based on um, the environment, the circumstances, your attitude. You're happy as long as you're eating Chinese food. And then when it starts bothering your stomach, that happiness is gone and you're frustrated. So happiness is based on experiences. When the joy of the Lord is a spiritual representation of the righteousness of Christ, an emotional um, footprint, as you could say, that he stamped in our spirit, if we just allow the joy of the Lord to take control um, the joy of the Lord. So many of us are overwhelmed with everyday situations and circumstances. But in Philippians 4, 4, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always, which means you have the opportunity to always have the Father in you. Rejoice. Listen to me very carefully. The righteousness of Christ that dwells within you needs your permission to be joyful. In James 1, 2, it says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Now, you're going to hear me say this more than once on this recording because joy is there. He said, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Now, if you've been following me, you would know that I have uh, been blessed with the healing of my daughter doing a health journey. I'm careful to talk about it because I don't want to dwell on what's going on or what was going on. But he had me count it all as joy. He had me look at everything that I was going through. Sometimes it took me a while to get the point, but I realized everything had to happen for a reason. And because of faith, my faith and the faith of others in different circumstances, James 5.15 allowed her to go from man's version of terminal to my father's version of 
healing. So what man said was terminal. James 5.15 gave her healing. And so during that experience, I said, okay, this happened, but why? I started rejoicing because I realized everything happened was reveal him to those who was taking care of her. She has had such an impact on the medical community that took care of her. Not only that, anybody that has come in contact with her or heard her testimony, even though it looked like it was not a positive situation. I started rejoicing and said, Lord, you got this. You allowed this to happen because you knew our faith was gonna show you to other people from the doctors to everybody. So I began to say, thank you, Father, for this experience. Because in James 1, 2, it says, count it all joy. There's a lesson and a blessing in everything. Did you know there was a lesson and a blessing in everything? When it happens, it's going to take you back. But then you take a deep breath, put on your big girl underwear, your big boy boots, and say, okay, this happened for a reason. Remember, or if you don't know, but there's a story about Job. Job was a faithful servant. And the scriptures have a lot of lessons in that book. But one of the things that I got from it that I want to share with you was not about what he lost, not about what he went through, but the end result was he got more than what he lost. So if we can start going into situations that are not comfortable with the mindset that Though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil and rejoice. If we start being proactive in this joy, it's not about the storm. It's about dancing in the storm. Have you ever, as a child, even as an adult, enjoyed just being in the rain and holding your face up to the sky and let the raindrops fall and open up your mouth and like, okay, it may be raining, but to me, it's a blessing. I'm enjoying this. So while my child was in ICU and going through so much, you know, for the last six months, I had to go back to who I was created to be. And that's a spirit being because as a nurse, and as a mother and as a woman of God, I had three different personalities going on. And I had to find the joy of the Lord and laugh my way through and praise my way through, worship him, be thankful for everything, trust him in everything because joy brings gladness and happiness wherein Satan wants to make you feel broken, hopeless, helpless, weak. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He said, counter all joy when you meet trials of various kinds. So no matter what it is, take a deep breath. It's okay, this happened. Satan is waiting to see how I'm going to respond. I'm going to respond in faith and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to get into my scriptures and I'm going to pray his word back to him. He's going to show me and strengthen me through this, what I need to do. Other than that, I will not allow my joy that's given to me by birthright to be interfered with. Remember, joy is permanent and spiritual, where happiness is momentary based on events and your reactions to them. The joy of the Lord is real. And when he says that, he's serious. Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. 
okay. Tornado coming. Tore your house up. There was no loss of life. But tore your house up. Power is going to be out for weeks. Water is limited. Roads are blocked by trees. Just think the worst scenario. But you know what? You're still alive. And when you look at what you have instead of what you don't have, then you'll learn how to rejoice in every situation. When you go into the rubble and you see your Bible, it's still there. You find your mother's picture. You find something that should have blown away and it didn't. You find a room that's still intact and nothing moved. We should start looking at things through spiritual eyes and be thankful in all things. Remember the joy, the fruits of the spirit, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, all of that. When you put it all in there together, there's nothing that comes at you that you can't handle. Job was there, lost children, lost, he lost everything, even had a nagging wife and a bunch of friends that shouldn't have been in his ear. But he trusted his faith and Jehovah God knew he was a strong enough believer that he was going to make it through. As we come to a close, nothing happens without his permission. The joy of the Lord is a spiritual gift that's waiting for you to tap into it. How can you be happy at all times? Because James 1, 2 reminds us, count it all joy. So, okay, this happened. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to trust God. I'm going to look at everything through spiritual eyes. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to declare and decree the Father's word back to him. And I know all of this has worked out because, see, the word said, walk through. He never said, we're not going to go through something. He said, we're not going to stay. You stay by choice. Trouble don't last always. I know you've seen that song and you heard that. But right now, I don't want to get all off track. We're going to focus on joy. Be excited that the joy of the Lord is there waiting for you to tap into. There's a lesson and a blessing in everything. I don't care how bad it is. Even in that tornado. Listen to me. If there was a loss of life, there's a lesson and a blessing in everything. When Job lost his children, the lesson and the blessing was, I trust God. There's a ram in the bush for you. There's something on the other side of everything that happens bad for you. If you can start being proactive and say, okay, God, if you allowed this, I'm excited to see the lesson and the blessing in this. Otherwise, you will be always broken, hurt, dismayed. The loss of life is not easy, whether it's a in the womb miscarriage or a death at any age once it's born. That's natural. Jesus wept. When David was fasting for his son, he wept. But when he realized, okay, my son is gone, the father did not see fit that he should continue life on earth, he got up, took a shower, put on new clothes, and continued along his journey. There's work to do beyond tragedy. And in order to do that, you have to trust the joy of the Lord and rejoice in everything. He said, count it all joy. When you meet trials of various kinds, count it all joy. I'm not making this up. Is it going to be easy? No, but the more you draw close to Jehovah God, our father, and allow the righteousness of Christ that dwells within you to take control, then these things that you face will be easier to handle spiritually because you would tell your emotions to go somewhere and sit down somewhere and you would stop overthinking things. There's always discussion about Adam and Eve and the apple. But let me just say this. 
Adam and Eve and the apple. The main thing that got them was their thoughts. Eve overthought everything. The Satan was like, sure, you want to be just like God. Eve was like, well, this must be from God because serpents don't talk. And so she overthought and she allowed herself to become vulnerable to what the spiritual entity was saying. You overthink yourself, then you give your thoughts over to the wrong thing. Now, when it came to Adam, there's other versions, and I'm not going to get into that, but let's just go with what you believe to be true in the King James Version is that he knew better, but he allowed his thoughts to say, well, if nothing happened to my wife, maybe this is okay. He overthought. He should have just stood and said, no, I know what my daddy said, and that's the way it's going to be. Once you come into agreement with your negative thoughts, then it takes control. He said, count it all as joy. Don't allow your thoughts to overwhelm you, to control or override your spirit man. When it comes to being joyful, don't let your emotions and your intellect override the joy of the Lord. There's a lesson and a blessing in everything. Get your emotions together. Like I said, Jesus wept. A lot of stories in the Bible showed you how people had to have emotions, but they got over it. Put your big spiritual underwear on, your big spiritual boots on, walk through that valley and rejoice. The murmuring and complaining that the people in the wilderness did stop them from going into the promised land. The quicker you get over your murmuring and complaining and your sadness and bewilderment, the quicker you can get into the true blessing of why things happen. There's going to be a lesson on doorways and permission spiritually to allow things happen, just like with Job. But we'll talk about that. But this is Ms. B, positively Ms. B. I've been talking about character, and we're going to talk about character a little bit more. And I pray that you understand that the fruits of the Spirit, including joy, is there for you to tap into. You can find me on my YouTube channel, a Positively Miss B. You can find me on all social media. Um, I'm getting better at that. And again, I have some technical difficulties while you're not seeing my face, but look forward to that. Every Friday at 9 a.m. on all the various platforms that the Priesthood Word Network is sharing us on, Roku, uh, Apple TV, Amazon, it's all over. But again, um, I'm trying to build up my contact on social media. So that being said, look forward to you next Friday morning at 9 a.m. East Coast time. Thank you. Day.